Shalom to you from OneForIsrael.org. This week's Torah portion begins in Deuteronomy 21, verse 10, and goes all the way to chapter 25, verse 19. It's called Ki Titse, which means when you go out. This section continues to expound the law, and a number of topics are presented. There's way too much to deal with here, so you should go and read it for yourself. For now, I want to concentrate on two verses in this section that speak about how those who are hanged should be dealt with in regards to the land of Israel. This may seem abstract or even irrelevant to modern readers, and it's not always clear how such passages affect us today. But these verses are extremely helpful in understanding the events in the life and death of Yeshua, Jesus. Deuteronomy 21 verses 22 and 23 say the following, And if a man has committed a crime punishable by death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night on the tree, but, shall bury, but you shall bury him the same day. For a hanged man is cursed by God. You shall not defile your land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. These verses help explain both the history and the theology of the New Testament regarding what happened immediately after the crucifixion. For skeptics who question the biblical story, and there are more than a few of those, this passage makes it clear that a body that was hanged or crucified would not have been left unburied in ancient Israel. That would have meant a curse on the land, and even those who were unsympathetic toward Yeshua would have wanted to avoid that. He was buried, and fortunately, that's not the end of the story. But this passage in Deuteronomy also speaks to the theology of what happened. A person who was hanged was considered cursed. This truth helped explain the message of the gospel. Yeshua himself was not guilty of a crime, as the Deuteronomy passage says. Instead, he stood in the place of those who are guilty. Paul writes the following in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. The curse of the law that Paul speaks about is not a condemna condemnation of the law itself. In fact, in Romans chapter 7, verse 12, Paul says that the law is holy and good. The law not only teaches us about the holiness of God, it provides principles for life and worship and it points ahead to the Messiah. The law also acts as a barometer, a measuring stick for us to learn about ourselves. Among other things, it reveals the problem of sin. In other words, the curse of the law that Paul speaks about is a problem with us and not the law. Yeshua stood in our place, but not everyone recognized what actually happened. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 speaks of what Yeshua would do and how it would be misunderstood. Some would even think that he himself was the guilty one, as it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. This chapter goes on to say that after he was cut off from the land of the living, his ministry continued. In other words, he rose from the dead and ultimately reversed the curse. These verses in Deuteronomy then are not so obscure or insignificant. Please join us next week for another edition of Five Alive, wishing you God's shalom from OneForIsrael.org. And don't forget to share. Our ministry, One for Israel, is an initiative of native-born Israelis on the forefront of media and high-tech evangelism, boldly proclaiming salvation to Israel. Raising up leaders and equipping them with the tools they need to transform our communities. We also provide humanitarian aid to Holocaust survivors with the love of Yeshua. 
Join us as we share the gospel in Israel. Become one for Israel.